Now we come to the strongest argument against murdering Duncan. He's a good king. As Macbeth acknowledges, Duncan has been a humble ruler, and he has carried out the powers of his office in a just and ethical fashion. This is a strong moral argument against the murder, and Shakespeare makes this point with some wonderful imagery evoking a medieval religious painting. Duncan's virtues are like trumpet-playing angels pleading his case. And if Duncan were killed, people's pity for him would ride the blast of air coming out of the trumpets, causing everyone to cry. The offense would provoke such anguish in people that their tears would drown the wind, just as the sudden downfall of heavy rain can stop the wind in a storm. With this imagery, Shakespeare oddly mixes sound and sight. Pity steers the sound of trumpet blasts into the eyes of the people so that they can see the murder for what it is. That's interesting, Ralph. Most English teachers would criticize a student for mixing metaphors like this. But with Shakespeare, it seems to work. Macbeth sums up his thoughts. There is no spur, no strong argument, that would impel Macbeth to murder the king. His only motivation is his vaulting ambition for power. Once again, notice the riding metaphors. No spur to prick the side of my intent, like a rider spurring a horse. And to vault means to leap up into the saddle. Just as his wife enters, Macbeth concludes his argument by extending the metaphor of horseback riding. Instead of landing in the saddle of kingship, his vaulting ambition would land him on the other side of the horse entirely. <laughs>